Today we'll be creating this particular stock market looping animation. We will be going step by step, but I'm trying a completely new format, hoping that it'll be much more concise and hence faster and more beneficial to you, the viewers. With that, let's build the entire tree while seeing the effect of every single node. So in our geometry node tree, the first node that we're gonna connect to the output is going to be a curved line. If you actually take a look at this curved line, we've made sure that it goes on the Y axis instead of the default Z axis so that we have multiple points on which we can instance even more lines, which we will eventually convert into planes. But right now, the curve has only two points, one here and one at the end. So we're gonna use a resample curve node so that we have many more points present. Now to place more lines on this X axis on every single one of the points, we can use this instance on points node. And for the actual instance, we can use another curve line. This curve line is going to go from an X value of minus five meters to an X value of positive five meters. And as usual, there's only two points. So we need many more points to allow for smooth distortion. Hence, we're going to use this resample curve node with a count of something really high like 500. Now, the next issue that we're going to face is that even though we have 500 different points, we don't have access to them because they're instances and they act as single objects. So to get access to every single individual point that's present within these instances, we can go ahead and use a realize instances node so that we now have access to every single one of these points. Next, we're going to have to displace these points using some sort of noise texture. So to displace these points, we can go ahead and use a set position node. So let's just unmute this. But for the offset, we're going to have to use a noise texture. So over here, we're connecting the noise texture to the offset of this set position to get this sort of an effect. But if you look at it, it's not moving only up and down, but it's also moving on the Y axis. As you can see that they're not straight and even if we look here, they're moving on the X axis as well. So we don't want that. We want them to move only up or down. And that's why we're going to use this combined X, Y, Z node and plug this into only the Z value. So that way you can see it no longer moves on the Y axis and it no longer moves on the X axis either. However, because we're using noise texture, it's shifted up by 0.5 units. And technically it was shifted on all of the axes. But since we're worried only about the Z axis, it's now moved up by 0.5 units on the Z axis. So we need to move it back down by 0.5 units. So we use this subtract node and we subtract 0.5 so that it comes back to the ground plane. And now to actually make this much stronger, we use this multiply node and multiply it by a large value so that we get much higher noise. Remember, the scale of the noise was also reduced down to 0.85 so that it's much larger. You can see the effect of the scale as it is with the default five versus our toned down 0.85. Now, the next thing is that we don't want this noise to happen on all of the planes, but we want it to be only on a small slither of the actual plane. For that, we're going to multiply it using a mask that we create using a geometry proximity node. So let's use this multiply node and we're going to multiply it with the distance from some particular object. So for the object, we're going to use an object info node and take in a plane. So we have to create this plane. Let's just unhide the plane. It's essentially a plane that was scaled down on the Y axis and scaled up on the X axis to fit the same dimensions of the grid that we created. And it's shifted a bit forward from the origin on the Y axis, which is where we want the effect to take place. Now, if you actually look at the cube, we're taking in the relative position of this plane. So we don't require to see the plane anymore. But if we directly use the distance from the face of the plane to every single one of these points, you'll see that wherever the plane is present, we'll have no motion. But as we go further and further away, the distortion keeps increasing. We want the exact opposite effect. So we're going to use a map range node. This map range node, we're going to have a from zero as the min and a from one as the max, because anything beyond one meter from that plane can be completely ignored. However, we want the two min to be the maximum value. So we're going to keep one and anything that was greater than one previously should be mapped to zero. So by using this particular setup in our map range node, we get this effect where now we can take the plane and then move it on the Y axis and have everything else or the noise move along with the plane, which is exactly what we want. So now that we've created this on the set position, I want to convert this from curves to actual meshes that we can see, because if we now switch off the overlays, they cannot be seen. So for these curves, I want two different things. One being actual planes that go down in this Z direction and the other being a nice rim around these curves. So to first create the planes, what I'll do is before we actually set the position itself, convert these to planes. So let's just mute the set position and use this curve to mesh node. If we look at this curve to mesh node for the profile curve, we can use a curve line to convert it into a plane. But remember, the actual direction of this curve line has to be such that it forms the plane in the global Z direction. And you can simply use trial and error, but because it's rotated, 
it's actually the y axis that we have to use to create it over here. If we were to use any other axis, we would not get the result that we expect, as you can see. Even if we were to use the x axis, since it's rotated, it actually creates the planes on the y axis. So it looks like a singular plane like this. So once you've done that, you can actually go ahead and set position. And that way you get just these tops moving like that. And we create the planes accordingly. But to actually make these edges be far more prominent, as you can see, they're barely noticeable over here. We can go ahead and add in a nice curve along every single one of the edges of these planes. For that, we're going to use the same set position node and we're going to connect it from the curves that we had. Remember, this realize instances is giving us just those curves that we had without any of the distortion. So we're going to use that and we need to distort it again. So let's use this set position node and we'll use the exact same offset that we used for this set position. So let's just plug this into the offset. And now to actually convert these from just the lines that they are, if you want to see that we can just mute this curve to mesh for the time being, we can go ahead and make these into thicker curves. For that, we can go ahead and use another curve to mesh node. And for the profile curve, we'll use a curve circle. So by keeping the resolution fairly low, because we don't need a very high resolution and keeping the radius really, really small, we get these nice curves that will be visible at the edge of our planes. So we can always set the right material for it. But to combine this with the original planes that we had, we have to use a join geometry node and join it with the actual planes that we had created. So we can unmute the planes and that's what we have. Along with that, we can give the planes also its own material. So let's use a set material node over here as well. Remember, for all of the different materials, you have to go to the material properties and just press this button to add in as many slots as required. And then you can create different materials, label them accordingly, and then choose the correct material over here and then play around with them later on. Now that we have this created, the next thing that we have to do is instance some cylinders, which are like the candles of the stock diagrams, as well as some spheres to give it that abstract effect. Of course, you could use actual candle shapes and things like that, but I'm just going to use cylinders and spheres for now. So since we want those spheres and cylinders to be present according to these curves, and they should move up and down according to the curves as well, we have to use the same realize instances node and then set position just like we did over here. So we're going to use that set position node and connect the offset to the same value that we created from this noise texture over here. So first we'll create the candles. So for that on this set position node, remember we have just the curves at the moment, we want to instance a bunch of those cylinders. So let's first connect that into the joint geometry so that we have the cylinders as well once they're instanced and then just go ahead and use this instance on points node. Now for the instance, we're going to use a curve line. But before we use that, if we were to just use the curve line directly, there would be far too many lines because there would be one line present on every single one of the points. We don't want that. We want them to be present on just a few points here and there. So we're going to use a random value node with the type set to Boolean and a very low probability. So I've used 0.015. Now we can go ahead and instance the curve line. And if you look at it, we are able to see the curve lines present at different regions. But the problem with these curve lines that would have been is that they would have started from the actual mesh itself. But since I want to give them some gap from the mesh, instead of having the start value at a Z value of zero, I'm going to have the start value at a Z value of 0 0.1. So that way they don't actually touch the mesh. And there's a little gap between the mesh and the actual curves that we create. Similarly, the end value, I'm just going to keep it at 0 0.2 so that it's a very small curve but I want them to actually be scaled up and down randomly so that different ones have different sizes. So I'm going to use the scale value and I'm just going to use a random value. And since I want to scale it up only on the Z axis and not on all of the axes, I'm going to use this combined X, Y, Z node. So that way, by changing the min and max values, you can have different variations of this actual length for the cylinders. But right now they're just curves. So again, if you just switch off overlays, they won't be seen. So to convert them into real geometry, we use a curve to mesh. And since we want to make them cylinders, we use a curve circle with a very small radius like 0 0.01. Just like before, we can set material. And in order to make it looping, we're going to have to actually store a random value for each of these. Because if we were to use the object info random node in the shader editor, the randomness will be different. So we're going to use this store named attribute node, and we're going to store a float value for every instance separately, we're going to name it random C for random cylinders. And we're just going to use a random value node from zero to one. Next, we can repeat the exact same process for spheres. So from this set position node itself, we can go ahead and use an instance on points, then connect that up to the joint geometry.
Then for the actual instance, we could use an icosphere. But before we do that, let's just have a selection of a very few points. And on those points, instance an icosphere with a very small radius and a fairly high subdivision number. So I went with the subdivision number of three. So right now they won't be able to be seen because they're present exactly at the points and they're very small. So the first thing that we can do is give some variation in the size. So let's unmute this random value node and plug that into the scale. And now because a few of them have become a bit larger, we can see where the points are present. But just like before, we don't want the points to be present on these actual curves. We want them to be shifted up on the Z axis. So we're going to use this set position node and to actually give it a random offset on the Z value, we're going to use a combine X, Y, Z. And for the Z, we're going to use a random value node. So once you have this again, we can set the correct material for them. And just like the cylinders, we need to store an attribute for each of them separately. So use a store named attribute for every instance and give it a random value. You can always play around with the seeds of these random values so that they don't become the same as anything else. Now, if you actually look at them, you can clearly see the lines present. So I'm going to use this set shade smooth node to make them smooth spheres. And that's actually all there is for the geometry node tree. We can now start the actual texturing. So in our render properties, the defaults that we're going to be using is the bloom and screen space reflections. And then for the world, we can just switch this to the shader editor and go to the world. You can see that we have the background set to completely black and we have a volume scatter with a density of 0.8. Now if we switch our viewport shading to render you can see that absolutely nothing can be seen. So the first thing that we have to do is add in some light. So this is the default light itself. We have repositioned it a bit according to our needs but this light is going to eventually light up a bit of our scene. Then if we switch over to the object the base object which are the actual planes is simply completely metallic with a roughness value of 0.3. The base color is just a complete white and that's it for the actual base material. Then for the lines, we've changed the base color to a hex value of E7B27C and we've made it completely metallic with a roughness kept at 0.5 itself. Similarly, for the candles, we've used the exact same metallic value of 1 and roughness value of 0.5. However, for the base color, we wanted two different colors. One to be either the metallic white or the metallic color that we've created for the curves. For that, we use a color ramp node with the interpolation set to constant so that we have either this or that. We use the exact same color for the colored side and we use a complete white for the other side. Then we use an attribute node and we change the type to instancer because remember this was different for every instance and we choose the correct name which was random cylinder or rand C. For the spheres we have the exact same material. All of the properties are the exact same except for the attribute we're using rand S for random spheres. The next thing if you actually look at the light properties that we've created we've used something called the custom distance. If you have the custom distance switched off the light goes on very far and I didn't actually like that because it was preventing me from looping the animation nicely. So by using this custom distance, we can limit the distance to which the light is actually affecting our scene. And I've just limited it to seven meters. Along with that, I don't want this light to actually interact with the volume. So I've reduced the volume down to zero. Then to actually set up our scene and create the animating loop, I went ahead and placed the camera to some location like this. The best way that you can place your camera is by positioning it somewhere like the origin and then tapping N to open the side panel, going to view and choosing camera camera to view. That way, once you're in your camera view, you can move it around as you normally would move around your 3D viewport using your middle mouse button and things like that. But once you find a nice position for the camera, go ahead and parent the light to the camera by selecting the light, control clicking the camera and pressing control P and choosing set parent to object. Similarly, that plane that we had created over here to create the displacement, we want that plane to also move along with the camera. So select the plane, control select the camera and then press control P, set parent to object. And once you're done with that, remember to hide the plane again. The next thing for the actual camera properties, we've reduced the focal length to 25 millimeters to give it a more wide angle view. And we've switched on depth of field and I've just reduced the f-stop down to 0.8 so that the depth of field is very high. And I've made the focal focus distance so that it focuses approximately at this central region. Then to actually make this animation a complete looping animation on frame zero, we've added in a keyframe and then we've shifted to frame 300 and essentially moved the camera by the entire distance of this object. So this object, remember in your geometry node editor is based off of a curve line that starts from zero and ends at 10, which means it's 10 units in length. So I've taken the camera and moved it by 10 units. However, to create the loop, we're going to have to use another cube, which is going to be an instance of the first cube. So we select the first cube and press Alt D to create a linked duplicate or an instance of the first object. And this instance, we have to move on the Y axis till it aligns here. If we were to move it by 10 units, there would be exactly one plane that would be intersecting with this last plane over here. So that's why instead of moving it by 10 units, as you can see, we've moved it by 10.1 units. And that way it moves to its original place 
and that's why the camera as well we have to move it on the y axis by not 10 units but 10.1 units to create the perfect loop so once you add in a keyframe make sure that you come here and press t linear to make it a seamless linear motion now if you were to go into your rendered view you can switch off overlays and just make sure that between frame 300 and 0 there should be absolutely no difference at this edge so if you're seeing absolutely no difference that means it's going to be a perfect loop but if you are seeing a difference go ahead and add in another instance behind the second one the last thing is this top area seems to have very little detail so to add in some detail you can add in a spotlight and just like before parent the spotlight to the camera so that it moves along with the camera but for the actual settings of the spotlight i've increased the power to 100 watts and i've made the size 60 degrees so that we get it much wider and i've increased the blend all the way to one so that it's a nice fall off from the light to the darkness. With that, for every single one of my materials, I've actually switched off shadows because I don't want them. And for the spotlight, I've made sure that it's only affecting the volume and not the actual material. So the diffuse and specular are zero itself. With that, hopefully I covered everything to create this animation. And the last thing that's left for you to do is set all of your animation defaults. I've actually kept it at 60 frames per second so that we get a five second long loop when we end it at frame 300. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, you can choose FFmpeg video. Encoding, I'm going to choose mpeg4 with an output quality of perceptually lossless and then for the color management i've changed the view transform look to very high contrast and i've actually increased the exposure to one and the gamma to two as well to get this particular look and with that you can go ahead and render your animation i hope this format actually helped go through the entire node tree much faster than me recreating it and playing around with the values along with that hopefully the audience retention was a little bit more because we just brushed through the entire tree instead of manually connecting everything up if you like this format let me know and i'll create more in this format but if you didn't do let me know and i'll go back to my original format itself where i create the entire tree while explaining every note if you like this do check out other videos on my channel i post videos every single day so there's a lot of content present waiting to be discovered by you and until the next video comes out tomorrow thank you so much for watching keep creating and don't forget to stay creative